Well, hello again. Finally, after a long hiatus. Today's the 21st of September, and we are going to get back to the Thunderbird at least a little bit, you know. It's going to be hard to kind of lay on that concrete again, but, you know, got to do what I got to do. Let's take a look at uh, some of the parts I got in. All right. My nice high grass yard again from all the rain we've been getting. Uh, I've got to get in here and mow it down for the doggies tonight. It's still wet. Hardly hard to walk across it. But anyway, 250 bucks worth in this box. I got it all from Thunderbird headquarters out in Concord, California. Let's see what I got. I can't even remember what I ordered now. It's been so long since I ordered it and it came in. What is this? Uh, okay. This is a new fuel pump. Well, it looks just like the original. How about that? I didn't want to go with this one, but you know, <laughs> it needs to be changed anyway. I gotta open this up and see if there's a filter in it. Sure is. How about that? Came with the, uh, the rubber ring and the filter. That's really nice. I appreciate it. That wasn't all that expensive either. I'll tell you what, I dealt with that. I called up the fella, I guess that owns or runs, I'm not sure which, the uh, Thunderbird headquarters out there in Concord. And I'm telling you, he, he's a good guy. He really is. He, you know, he, I like the fact that when you call him, bingo, he's on the phone. I don't have to go through some 90 mile crap to get to him. He talks to me, he tells me what's what, and I tell him what's what, and we work out a deal, and bing to bang, there it is. Good fella. Highly recommend Thunderbird Headquarters from the experience I've had thus far. Okay, let me put that over there. I also picked myself up a 3 8 uh, line at O'Reilly the other day, and I cut off both ends. It was a uh, brake line, but it's steel. And I'm going, I also picked up a nice, I needed a new tubing bender. This is the only piece of crap I've had. And, I don't, I, I'm tired of using that thing. I wanted something a little more modern, you know, and I figured it would run me about $25, but as it turns out, it didn't. It was only uh, $10.99, I think, which is great, you know. And uh, I saw a demonstration of this on YouTube. These are the uh, upper uh, A-frame or upper control arm bushings that go on the end of the rods. I still have to cut a piece of pipe that's, I believe, nine and a quarter inches long to keep when we tighten these things down and torque them down. So the ears, the ears on the A-frame don't get squeezed together when I start torquing. you got to have something between those two. So when I torque, I can reach the torque and it won't collapse the, uh, the thing. I, I mentioned that once before, I'll show it to you later. But it comes with the, uh, the little grease petcock, or whatever you want to call that thing. One thing about these things, I want to make sure everybody understands. When you're all done putting these things on that horizontal rod on each side, these grease fittings have got to be sticking straight out and staring you in the face. If they're up here like this, how are you going to get the grease gun up in there? You can't. There's almost no room for the fitting. The grease gun nozzle will not make it. We'll cover that also when the time comes. So there's one. And here's the other one. They weren't that expensive. And uh, this is the, uh, the bushing for the lower control arm. It's just one bushing. Goes through. Nut in the bolt. Torque it down. And then we have a... Uh, this is our, uh, what is this? This is the upper. Yeah, I think this is the upper ball joint, I think. Yes, yeah, the upper ball joint. Let's see what else you got. This one should be able to have an arm on it. Yeah, this one's the lower ball joint for the upper and lower control arms. Got to keep those covered. And then I have the cushions for the coil spring. Looks like there's two in a pack. Well, I don't know if there's two in a pack. That means I've got enough for both springs. When I take apart the other side, I'll already have them. One goes on top, one goes on the bottom. We'll show you how that's done also. So that's not too bad. We've done pretty good so far. By the way, uh, most of this stuff was fairly inexpensive. What ran the price up were those ball joints. They were pretty rough on the wallet. Well, the first thing I'm going to have to do is clean up underneath here and get rid of a lot of the spider webs that have developed. Lots of spiders and webs this year in Arkansas. I think it had a lot to do with the prolonged heat. Anyway, and the spider webs go all the way down. <laughs> anyway, wifey said, here, John, take my little duster thing that I use. You can use it on your car. Well, I really appreciate that, honey. At least I'm pretty sure that's what she said. 
All right, let's officially start this mess out with, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, drill out that hole that mounts the fuel pump to the timing chain cover, you'll recall, for those of you who have been following this mess called a re you know, refurbishment series. <laughs> uh, the threads got, are stripped. They were probably partially stripped when the fuel pump was put on, and I probably finished it off. So either way, it doesn't matter how it happens. They're stripped, and we got to deal with it. Now, this is a 23 64 drill bit. And this is a, uh, what is this? This is a 7 sixteenths by 14 tap. 7 sixteenths by 14 tap. So we're going to drill it out using this long rod, using this uh, chuck from a, for a drill. And we're going to use our variable speed drill that I have right here. I'm, I, you know, you don't want to go in there and go, you don't want to do that. You know, you've got to try to keep this thing as straight as possible until it reams down in that hole. And, you know, if you get off to the side like that, you got real problems. Not to say that I won't get off to the side, but, you know, if that happens, we'll just have to deal with that, too, at a later date. But uh, we want to try to keep it as straight and as, as, and as, you know, level as possible. We don't want it too far left and right or too far up and down. Once you get it in there so far, the drill bit I'm talking about, the hole pretty much guides it in all the way. But we're going to use lots of oil. I want to be able to just go in there nice and easy and come out until the drill bit bottoms out. Now, once the drill bit bottoms out, we'll go ahead and measure the depth that we've gone in. Now, it'll bottom out at a certain point. I don't think it goes all the way through. And uh, when it does bottom out, I'll take it out. We'll measure the depth, and then we'll see how far our tap uh, will go down in there. Keep in mind, the very end of the tap, the very end of every tap, uh, doesn't do a whole lot of cutting because the threads are tapered on the end, you'll notice. Probably got about... Uh, Come on now, focus in on me here now. There we go, you can see we don't have a whole lot of cutting on the very end. So we're talking about what, you know, a little over an eighth of an inch that we're gonna have to, uh, I don't know, it won't be much more than an eighth of an inch. Uh, anyway, it'll probably start cutting at about that third, that third uh, thread right there. So you have to take that into consideration when you make your measurements. So let's see what I can do. First thing I have to do is scrape off all the old gasket material that is still attached uh, or still is still coating the timing chain cover. Uh, I want to be able to scrape it all off and we're going to use this little razor blade scraper to get up in there and scrape off as much as we can. I have new gaskets and I have uh, a whole tube of uh, a gasket sealer that we're going to be putting on it when we hopefully put the fuel pump on. And keep in mind one more thing, the fuel pump is also going to have to be drilled out. It's going to have to be drilled out to allow the bolt to go through. Now the bolt we're going to be using, the new bolt, is bigger than the old bolt. It'll be this gold one right here. So you want a little bit of play in that hole on the pump. Brendan mentioned this to me. I had already known that that's what I was going to do. But I'm glad he did. It kind of, you know, it's always good to know what, what I'm thinking. Uh, he's thinking. And when the two of us think the same thing, uh, he can always chalk it up to my teaching. Anyway, we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, it has to be a little bit loose in there. You don't want it so tight. That, you know, there's a possibility I could get the hole just misaligned a little bit when I drill it out and when I tap it. But if this thing doesn't have the, you know, the ability, you know, the ability to kind of move around just a little bit to catch those threads and go in, uh, then you got another problem. So the hole, yeah, once I get the hole drilled through the fuel pump, I'll probably take a little grinding stone. On my, it depends on how loose it is. I'll take a little grinding stone with my motor tool and kind of ream it out just a little bit. Soft material. And hopefully I'll have just enough play in there. Not a lot, you know, enough that I can catch the threads if need be. Kind of a little insurance thing. So let's get out of the car and start scraping. Right up there is all that gasket material I have to, or the gasket sealer is what it is. I'm just going to take this thing and keep working until I get, you know, as much of it off as I can get. I'll probably use a little bit of lacquer thinner to clean it up best I can. The hole we'll be drilling out is the one right there. This one here is okay. That's the bad boy right there. All right, I do believe that's clean enough. Let's figure out what we're going to do next. Well, as I said, we don't want to be running our drill bit into that hole dry. You know, a dry drill bit, uh, it could cause some problems. Just that uh, timing chain cover is made out of aluminum. It won't take much to mess things up. So we want to put plenty of oil on here, and you know what kind of oil do you want to use? Well, you can use just about any kind of oil. I have an old, I have an old can of 3 in 1 oil. I don't know where this came from, but it's been around since Methuselah. I could put a bunch on there and then squirt some up into the hole. Yeah, I'll be able to get that up in there far enough. If not, 
I could even use some white lithium spray grease up in the hole. You know, anything that would lubricate the bit. Because I'm not going to be doing it real hard and fast, but I want it to go in nice and easy, you know. So let's get that set up. Well, you know what they say about the best laid plans. Well, this plan went to pot. This was my brilliant idea that earned me all those $100 that people were sending me. I guess I'm going to have to send all that $100 back. The problem was it would have been fine, but it doesn't line up with the hole. When I put the drill bit in the hole where it has to go, it's off about that far. And I can't, the hole that this thing is going through is not large enough, you know, I, I could maybe pick it up or move it around. It's about that far. It's, it's the alignment of the motor to the fender. They're just off that much. So what do we do now? Hmm, well I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We just back up, regroup, and come up with another plan. Which will probably garner me another hundred dollars from all my generous donors. Anyway, uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do it by hand. We're gonna take this little this thing right here, which will fit on the end of the down there on where the uh, that uh, drill chuck is, it has a fitting just like that. And this will go on there just like that, and, we'll just, and it's soft aluminum. We're you know drilling into. We're just trying to remove the threads, and I think that'll work. I'm just going to have to be a little bit patient. I got plenty of oil in the hole. We'll just take our time. Might be better anyway. That chances of me going off center with that drill bit. Might be totally alleviated, you know, alleviated by doing it this way. If not, eh, well, we'll have to come back and plan C, plan four, plan five, whatever. <laughs> Believe it or not, we're making some progress. I need to blow the hole out with some air. By golly, I think we've got it. On doing it by hand work, just nice and slow and easy. It was probably the best way to do it anyway. Well, how far have we gone in? Well, I'll tell you, you know, on the end of the drill here, we've gone in the entire length of this shaft right here. Now, if we put that up against the bolt we're going to be using, we can see, my gosh, look at there. We're well, we're well in deep enough. Not a problem at all. Because part of this uh, goes through the uh, fuel pump flange, and it leaves only about maybe, I don't know, maybe half of the number of threads out. And we've gone in the entire length of, of the bolt, so no problem at all. Now let's see if I can get the, the hole threaded. Well, the tap seems to be going in nice and straight. It's just a matter of working it in. I was going to have to do this by hand anyway. So I'll just keep working at it. I want to get it in maybe, oh, maybe another quarter of an inch or so. We should be good to go. I'm going to try to go as deep as I can, actually, but without going crazy, you know. When you're using a larger tap like this, you want to take it out after, you know, every so often, unscrew it, uh, clean up the threads, blow out the hole, re-lubricate it, and put it back in. This is a slow going process. Just don't run it in there, you know. If you run it in there, you're asking for trouble unless you're an expert. And I'm, of course, no expert. Easy does it, bit at a time, you know, quarter of an inch at a shot. Maybe a little less if need be. Don't ever be in a hurry if you're in a hurry. Come back later when you're not in a hurry. All right, I had to switch to a little open end wrench uh, to get the end there. The ratchet was just taking up too much room. The little open end wrench I had here at seven millimeter it worked great. I think we're in deep enough. What I'm gonna do is take it out, clean it out, and see if we can't get the bolt in. If the bolt goes in quite a ways, then we're just about home free. Well, the bolt went in real nice and easy. Unfortunately, it's not far enough. All right, grab the tap and drive on, John. All right, we're not done yet, but we are getting closer. All right, I've got it in just about as far as she's going to go, and this is the fuel pump. And once this goes up there, that's all I'm going to need. And we are well beyond that, okay? So now comes the fun part. Now we have to drill out that hole to fit this thing here. It won't be any, it won't be threaded. It'll just slide right on through. Fun and games coming up. Now here's something interesting. The uh, drill bit goes right through it. <laughs> Never would have expected that. Which, uh, you know, offhand you would think, well, if that's the case, then the bolt will go through. Nope, not going to go. The threads are keeping it from going through. So we're going to have to do some reaming out. And, of course, I taped everything off because I don't want any shavings to get down inside this uh, pump. A mechanism here that, that goes to the diaphragm. 
Tape it all off. Keep the stuff out of the inside. If possible, do your best. All right, she's in there now. She's got plenty of uh, plenty of wiggle room, like, like it's needed. Okay, I can go around a little bit. All right, let's do a little dry fit and see how she goes. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I'm just having a terrible time getting this fuel pump up in there. There's just no room to work. This sway bar is in the way. This oil filter uh, mount is in the way. There's a water hose over here. See if I can get it in the camera here. There's a water hose right there that's in the way. Everything is in the way and I can't get to the bolts. I don't know if that's clear or not. Okay, there we go. So, there's only one other, you know, what other alternative do I have? Uh, I can take down this. This is the oil uh, pressure sending unit right up here. It's just connected with a wire. There's four bolts holding this, which makes it easy to get to. So if I remove this, there's nothing here except the gasket. Between, between here and here, it's just a gasket, that's all. And it has some uh, horizontal holes in it. I don't know, that might be a home base gasket there. It sure looks like one. But anyway, I think what I'm going to do, I'm tired of struggling with it. If I don't get it in there right, it's going to wind up leaking. And I don't want to have, have that to happen. It'll leak oil. And it'll run all over everywhere, and I'll be right back where I started. So... I'm just going to take a break right now, and I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Maybe I've got one more gasket left to put this on with, and if I screw that one up, I'll have to take another trip down to O'Reilly. But I am really fed up with this thing. Oh, man, this, I hate this. You know, I've got to use this pump. I mean, I don't want to spend any more money on another pump or a block and, and a, you know, a blocking plate and electric pump. Which is probably what I should have done to begin with, but I don't want to. There has to be a certain amount of fuel pressure to run this 390 engine, and uh, if it's not right, then the engine won't just won't operate. So this here provides the needed pressure. Can't remember what it is—55 to 60 psi, something like that. I can't remember. Anyway, maybe it's 35 to 40. Haven't looked it up yet. I, I think I saw it once and just breezed right by it. So this pump is designed to run with this engine, but this thing here is in my way. I just can't get up in there. And if I have to, this sway bar is going to come off too. It's only held on with two bolts on each side, one here, one there, and the same thing on the other side. I can move it down out of my way uh, to get to it. But boy, what a nightmare this is turning out to be. I'm spending way too much time on it. Now this is the uh, adapter that we just took off. Here's your oil sensor on top and of course your oil filter screws in the bottom. There's only four bolts holding it in, one in each corner with a gasket. That's it. So this is your adapter and this is what she looks like when she's off the car. You got to clean off every bit of that gasket material. Get it all off because when you put it on you don't want, you don't want anything, uh, any big chunks of anything to go down in those holes and clog up your filter prematurely you know what I'm saying I mean that's what the filters for but it's not for big chunks of gasket that sort of thing they can lodge and, and dirt can collect in it and next thing you know you get limited oil flow not in the filter but in the adapter itself now that's where that adapter bolts on you have four bolts one in each corner one two three four and this is where your oil goes in and out through those two holes now that should give me enough room I hope to be able to get up on this side of the fuel pump where I can get the bolt in. If not, <laughs> we just keep ripping and tearing. I am happy to report that the fuel pump is in. I said I'm not leaving this shop today until that pump is in. I don't care if I have to work until 5 o'clock in the morning. And as you can see, it's pretty. it's getting dark. Fortunately, I made it. I don't even know what time it is. My phone, matter of fact, is underneath the car. In case I have a heart attack, it's easy to call 911 from under the car. I'm under the car. Come save me. <laughs> okay, uh, all I have to do tomorrow is uh, the filter I've already put, you know, up on it, underneath. And tomorrow, according to the book, you're supposed to put a little coating of oil on your seal. Put it down in the thing like this. A little coating of motor oil is what they say. It's just like putting a oil filter on a car. Just, you know, one of these jobs right here. Put your oil on there. Just a thin coat. What you're looking for is a suction seal. You don't need to slather it on there. You know, just a thin coat. Put it in there and then just screw the whole thing on and we will be done. 
course that still leaves us with uh, this little problem here I'm gonna have to get that gasket right there and get that back up but that is nothing compared to what this spool pump has done I will never ever take that pump off again if it craps out next time electric pump goes on I'll tell you what let's go ahead and uh, wrap up this video with something that I has been well something is what I call unfinished business on our carburetor this thing has been bugging me since day one when I first saw it and I, I kept thinking every once in a while it would pop into my head and I, you know I've got to do something about that I've got to do something about that well sure enough today's the day this thing right here is just a it's just a piece of rubber wrapped around a screw head or a screw the threaded shaft on the screw that's been put all the way through there with a nut on the end it was originally a white piece of plastic with a head, the head of the screw would come up like, I mean the head of the, uh, the white piece of plastic would come up kind of round like and the threads of this screw here, this adjustment screw, kept it in, it held it in. Now what that thing looked like, the original one, this is not it, I took it out of another carburetor carcass I had, this is what I'm talking about. And kind of a roundish head, but it was a lot longer than this, over the years this one has broken off so what that was was this one would go all the way through like so and it would stick out the other side but it got brittle you know they get brittle so what they did whoever it was you know it worked for them but uh it's not going to work for me i can't stand it anymore i kept it just kept bugging me and bugging me they put the screw thread uh they screw through and then they put this uh rubber uh looks like a vacuum line piece on it and it worked you know like i said temporarily where it worked for probably quite a while. The problem is the uh, the thing that hits against it, this thing right here. It comes up and hits against it like like that. It was wearing through the uh, rubber. It made a kind of a trench in the rubber. So we're going to get this thing off here and we're going to do something different. And I think I have figured out what needs to be done. We're going to fix this thing with this right here. Seems awfully big, doesn't it? Well, let me show you how we're going to do it. This is one of those binder posts, you know, that you, you know, you put it through the holes and then you take the threaded part on the other end, just thread it down the center. But it is hollow down in there to a certain point. It's deep enough to help us out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it and uh, mark it. And then we're going to glue that thing on there just like that. We're going to mark it, we're going to measure it, mark it, cut it off, and then glue it right on there, right up against that nut with some JB Weld. Once we get it glued on, that's what it's going to look like right there. I'm going to pack that thing full of JB Weld, then I'm going to run it down on there, take off whatever's excess, and just let it dry overnight. Well, I think that's going to go ahead and do the trick. It sure beats this old piece of soft rubber they had on there that kept wearing down further and further every time that, every time this arm right here would come up and hit it. It just took a piece of the rubber away. So we'll know more in the morning whether or not our brilliant idea is going to do the trick. Well, that's it for now, guys. Uh, next time, uh, we'll go ahead and hopefully, if this thing is cool, we'll go ahead and get the carburetor on. And we will hopefully, I don't know if I'll have time, but I should be able to bend the gas line that I bought and uh, figure out what we have to do. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go downtown and buy another very short piece of 3H gas line. And you'll see why in the next video. But once we get the carburetor on and we get the, uh, the gas line bent and hopefully secured to the inner fender, I've ordered some uh, different kinds of clamps to mount it to the inside fender which might require me to drill a few holes but that's okay I'd rather do that to hold that gas line it'll help prevent rust and corrosion and any damage to the line if I just kind of modernize that part just a little bit and you'll see what I'm talking about next time so I don't know when those things will come in they, they came out of China of course everything's still coming out of China it makes me sick but what can you do I went all over downtown trying to find these things they weren't there nobody had them you know, we got a pretty good sized town here, you know, 100,000 people. And when you go downtown, you can't find a little tiny thing that, you know, when I was a kid, you used to be able to find them everywhere. But you go downtown now, and they're not there. You know, I think times have changed, you know. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this video. It's good to be back. 
and I do appreciate your patience on the long absence we had. Uh, like I said, it was it couldn't be helped. So until next time, this is John. I'll tell you what, let's just keep this video going a little bit longer. You know, it's been a while since I put one up, like I said, and, you know, I figure I owe you a little extra time. Uh, it rained pretty good this morning, as you can see, filled in the big old hole there where I used to park my truck all the time. That's going to be all filled in with dirt. Get my grandson, uh, or our oldest grandson, uh, James, over here, our Air Force guy. He needs to work off some of that fat he got around his belly when he was stationed in Turkey anyway. So uh, let's go back out and do a little more work on the old T-Bird. Well, after it's dried all night, I'd say that's pretty good. It's not going to go anywhere. Nice and tight. Way to go. Okay, that job is done uh, for the next video when we can finally get this baby bolted up. Now I feel a lot better. Next, we have a roll of rubber. Uh, it's paper and rubber uh, combination gasket material. You can buy it at any automotive store. This one here I got from O'Reilly. They're different prices, different types, but I like the kind that's kind of rubberized. It has a rubbery type of feel to it. They're a lot thicker and they work real good. They cost like, you know, a couple dollars more, but they're not that expensive. I think I paid like eight bucks for this or whatever, but it'll last me a long, long time. There's a lot of things I can do with that. And before, before this car is over, you can bet there'll be plenty of other things I'll need it for. And the reason I bought it is I need to make a gasket. There's no way I can find a gasket anywhere online for this. It would cost too much to, to buy and ship for that one little piece when I can get an entire roll and make my own gasket. Well, well how do you make the gasket? Well, it's easy. You, you put it on the... Uh, you, you, this is where your gasket goes. You just set it on top of the paper or the gasket material you bought. You trace around it with a pencil and mark your holes. And then you just start cutting. Now this thing, of course, has holes in the center here that have to be cut out, okay? Now this could be any shape hole. It doesn't have to be this kind here. It could be any shape. It doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to make the impressions for these holes uh, in the gasket so you know what to cut out with the X-Acto knife. Now here's the uh, gasket that I cut out. I just cut out the basic shape. All I did, like I said, was set it on there. And I've got it marked as this being the side that goes to the block. And uh, because there is a difference uh, between the, uh, the angle here is shorter than the long angle here. Okay, it's shorter over here, then it goes down to a long, a long section. So it's not split halfway. It's about oh maybe a third. Okay. Anyway, uh, this this will be this will go against the block, and uh, this thing here will sit on top of that. So this will go to the top, and then this with the uh, sensor at the top. This is the way it'll fit on there just like that. And I've already marked the holes. Let's take care of the holes first. It's always nice to have a little paper punch around that you can, you know, punch your hole. The hole won't, won't be big enough. I'll have to I'll have to punch around oh, a little bit further all the way around this way to make it big enough for the bolts to fit through. The holes are cut. The bolts all line up real nicely through the hole on a dry fit here. I also decided to put brand new lock washers on this. The other ones were kind of flattened out. And of course the bolts are going from the other direction up, but you know, for the purposes of what we're about to do, I need to be able to hold the gasket still. We need to tap on this gasket to try to make impressions on the opposite side so we know where to use the X-Acto knife to cut. So now that it's in place, I'll hold it with one hand, nice and snug, down there like that. And I'll just take it this little hammer and I'll start tapping. Not, I'm not going to slam it. Just tap, 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 tap. It'll take a few minutes, but you know, when you're all done, there should be an impression on the other side where we need to cut. I'll tell you what, that turned out so good. I might just go ahead and just leave these bolts in here and then just cut from this side. Why bother taking it off and going through all that crap? I think I can just use the side walls of the metal as my guide and work all the way around. Wish me luck on that one. Well, not bad so far. Let's do the second one. What you do first is, you know, give it a rough cut. Just kind of cut it out as much as you can. Then just use the walls of the metal to, you know, if you, you have to have a really sharp X-Acto knife, though, or something similar. And the hobby knife or whatever. And then just trim it out. The important thing here is to make sure that the uh, holes around the bolts are not too large. You don't want any seepage of oil 
to get through here. You don't want any breaks or cuts. And you want to make sure that you get a good seal between these two channels. You know, if any oil, if it comes in, and if it comes in here and it goes across here and goes back out, you're bypassing the filter. And it, w it would not be good. So all of this will line up just about the way it's supposed to. I think it turned out pretty good. Now we'll just take some of this non-hardening gasket sealer. I, I always have used the non-hardening. I don't like the hardening stuff. A non-seal. Normally I use former gasket. I believe it's number two, but they didn't have any, so I bought this stuff here at O'Reilly's. Turns out to be exactly the same thing. Same color and everything. Works exactly the same. So I'm going to put some of that around here like this. And then you have to wait a while for it to get tacky. You know, maybe 15, 20 minutes or whatever. So what I'll do is, while that's getting tacky, I'll go out and put some on the engine block as well. Uh, one more thing, uh, when we put oil back in this car, we're going to be putting a, a 15W40 heavy-duty diesel because it's, it's easier on the old classic car engines. It has more zinc in it, and it, it prevents wear. It puts a film between the metal parts, whereas the newer... The new oil doesn't quite do that. It, it, it has a much lower level of zinc, whereas this stuff, this is what's going in the car. It's going to be really, really good and easy on the engine. It's particular, you know, the valves. I figured, what the heck, I'll just go ahead and show you how to put the oil on here. And on this here, we're going to put the oil on over the entire ring on the one for the fuel. Front, top, back, everything. But on here, we don't. We just use clean motor oil. Clean. Don't use that nasty black stuff you took out of your car to put that on your, your new uh, oil filter. I've seen so many people do that. It's got grit and dirt in it. It's no good. You're going to get a leak. Nice thin film, just like that. Okay. And then we wipe our finger off. Make sure. And then we run it around one more time to remove any excess. That's all you have to do. That's all there is to it. That is, that will create your suction seal. We're going to do the same thing to this, top and bottom. And that takes care of that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are red-eye to go out and put all this crap up. Let's get it done. Anyway, you all take care of yourselves and be sure to come back for the next part. I believe it's what, 59 maybe? You've got mail. You've got mail. That's right, I do have mail from our good buddy Tom MGB out in California. And he, this is in response to, you know, my brilliant idea that's yielding me hundreds of dollars, even though it's phony baloney money from, uh, you know, old 64 Goat and uh, Buzz 1151 up there in Portland. Goats from Connecticut, by the way. <laughs> you know, what can I say? Yankee, you know, two Yankees. What can I say, you know? Anyway, let's see what Tom sent here. All right, you see that? You see? You see, goat? You see, buzz? Look at there. See? We're talking hard cash, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Tom MGB. Who is this guy here? Hoffer. Hoffarth. H O F F A R T H. Was he ever a president of the United States? Hoffarth? I never heard of him. Well, maybe he was. He may, maybe a president died and he took over for a couple of days. They decided to put him on a reserve note. A hundred dollar reserve note? Let's see what Tom has to say. Hi, John. I'm enclosing this crisp one hundred dollar bill. Yes, you, you see? You see? Hey, Buzz, go to contribute my fair share. You know, you got to give it to old Tom MGB. He's got it together. Toward your Thunderbird Repair Fund. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Please ignore the for motion picture use only statement. What? For motion picture use only. What? That's just the U.S. government kidding around. Feel free to use this hundred dollars for anything you need. Your pal Tom. For motion picture use only. Hoffarth. Oh, you know there was a guy named Hoffarth. I seem to recall, who came up with money that they could use in 
in movies and stuff, you know, when they handed stacks of hundred dollar bills, thousand dollar bills or whatever. And uh, seems to me he put his picture on those on those hundred dollar bills or whatever it was. Uh, apparently. I, I th hey Tom, I think you might have made a mistake here. This says for motion picture uh, use only. Uh, I can send this back to you. You can send me like the real McCoy. <laughs> yeah, I'll be waiting for that. You let me know what you want me to do. Would you like me to just put it back in an envelope and put a stamp and fire it back out there in the West Coast? 